So in the last section, I gave you a brief introduction of what a file-based DI is. But I want to talk about one of the most important aspects of any successful file-based DI, and that's metadata. Metadata is the lifeblood that runs through your complete post-production pipeline. If you don't manage your metadata properly at the beginning, you're going to have a lot of headaches when you get to the DI or really at any point in, in the process, but specifically in the DI since it tends to come towards the end of production. So I want to take you through a couple of common file types that people are using these days. Some file types like the Canon SLR, they provide no metadata, which is a problem. And other file types like RED provide a tremendous amount of metadata, a lot of metadata which is not all used. So let's take a look at some Canon SLR footage first. I have some Canon SLR footage here, and if I bring up the media browser, you're going to see something interesting. Now, these are all Canon 5D file names. Uh, it's real Canon 5D footage. But if you look over here to the time code column, you'll see there's time code in all of this footage. And if you look over here to the real ID, there's real IDs in all of this footage. How is that possible? Well, we injected this metadata, and that's that's really, really key if you're going to be working with Canon SLR footage. In a future section of the presentation, I'll show you how we injected the metadata in the footage. It was done in an external app, but it really, it really is essential, and it allows you to treat this footage as if it were any other file type. So what are the important fields that really need to be tracked when doing a file-based DI? It really comes down to three things. Your file name, your time code, and your real ID. With those three things, you can really identify every single shot, even if you're doing a feature film and you have you know, hundreds of hours or thousands of hours of footage if you're doing documentary work, uh, which, is, which is one of the most challenging types of productions to manage metadata in. Let's take a look at red footage, because red footage is, is a little bit different. This is source red footage. We haven't injected anything. If I click the I button, when I'm hovering over a shot in a construct, it brings up this little info field. I can also, if I want to view metadata more globally, I can do that here in the media browser. But if I just want to take a quick peek at some metadata, I can do so by hitting I on the keyboard. Now, red by default, it has time code. It has a real ID. It actually has two tracks of time code. And I can see that by entering the player and coming over here to uh, the effects controls in the lower left-hand side. And if I go to general, you can see there's a field for time code. And I can select either time code, which is time of day time code, or edge code, which is like a uh, record run time code. So time of day time code in the red camera, it's running continuously in the background. And uh, whether you're recording or not, when you hit record, it notes that, that time. Whereas edge code is recording continuously starting from one hour and it stops when you hit stop on the camera and it'll pick up again when you record again. Every time you insert a new reel or a new uh, SSD card or compact flash card, it'll start over again at one hour. This can be something that you'll pull your hair out on occasion if somebody gives you an EDL that's referencing edge code and your project is set up, set up to read time code. I've been through this several times, and at this point I've, I've learned to immediately check if my metadata is set to time code or edge code, but it's definitely something that can be a gotcha.